South Korea is a leading uh, battery maker. They've got massive industrial capacity, has one of the coolest car companies uh, now with, uh, with great uh, EVs. And they're investing some of it in the United States to build some of these facilities. Those countries are going to make the profit. I mean, look at Apple. You know, everyone talks about Apple. They don't even make anything in the United States. And you know, you want to own the IP, you want to own the, you want to own the profit, and it's going to come back to uh, South Korean companies. So I think that's also very good, right? It's not in an industry sector that South Korea has nothing to gain. So they're going to do a lot here. They're going to do a lot there. They're going to make a lot of profit. I even think Europe that, you know, and Canada and others who, you know, hear the sucking sound of all this money that the United States is uh, is uh, throwing and so some of their industries are, are, are saying, okay, I'm going to prioritize the United States. Prioritize is different than not do it somewhere else. If we are going from a fossil fuel world to a material, minerals and materials based world, the pie is going to be so big for new industry that everyone is going to gain. People are going to need their facilities in Europe and their facilities in, uh, in Asia and their facilities in, in the United States. It just means that, yes, people will not be able to only build in their one country and then export everything. So I, I think that um, it might be that the timing has changed for different countries because of what the United States did, did but that everyone ultimately, if they're in a good sector, this is their sector, they're a leading company, they will continue to make. Um, you know, I'd rather not be in the oil producing business in 20 years. Um, and, you know, uh, that would be bad for, you know, for, for, uh, for the country. So I, I did is very po positive. Um, again, it's not um, ending trade. It's not ending these alliances. I think it's strengthening these alliances. It's just taking a slight detour to get things jump started. And in order to give American taxpayer money, they want to see a bit more um, of that to be done you yes. know, in America. There's an American expression, when the train is moving, you can either be on the train or you can get run over by the train. <laughs> and there's a moving train. And I think it's uh, wise to try to be, uh, to get on the train as much as possible. Once again, there are practical reasons, you know, uh, we're going to work uh, with China in the future uh, now, but in the end, I think it's providing that uh, diverse uh, supply chain. President von der Leyen uh, made her state of, uh, of Europe, and you know they called for an investigation of electric vehicles coming from China. Because think of that for a moment: Germany's GDP is 10% their auto industry, and not only are they losing the China market because people are no longer buying their cars there, either for national reason, they don't need to ban something. They can, you know, I think people get the message. So they're existentially suffering in China, and then now cheap. EVs are coming from China and they're and they don't know what to do. And this is an existential threat to the Western world because all of our industrial bases have been built on the auto sector. Right. If you think about what is built out there and all the other industries that happen from steel to aluminum to, you know, semiconductors and other things. So I, I just think that um, all these countries at the same time are dealing with this existential threat. And therefore, they're going to do anything they can to um, to survive. And and I do believe that it is in America's interest and they should make sure that we're all working together to survive as opposed to fighting each other for crumbs uh, at the end of, uh, of this, because the pie should be very large. So I'm hopeful, as I say, like after all the dust settles, that we'll come away in a much better uh, position. China is an incredible country, you know, incredible people. It's, and look, the United States, too, you know, we withhold selling things from them now. And there's a, they're now not selling us germanium and other things. So th this is not good, right? Actually, su strong supply chains is probably the best way to peace um, in my in, in, in my in my my view. But you know, I just use, uh, you know, a few a few examples. Uh, first example is, you know, in Sweden now it's been reported like uh, they're withholding, not not uh, not officially, um, graphite. Well, that's because, you know, Sweden once is building Northvolt, this, this, you know, domestic European battery company. And, oh, BYD and CATL want to go there. So, OK, we're not going to, you know, sell them the, the, the constituent, the materials they need to, you know, stand up this uh, industry. Well, that, that is completely, once again, like that is not an open system. Um, and that's a problem. Or just now, you know, we are going to open a, uh, a mine in the United States for uh, cobalt, Gervois, not, not to overtake the DRC or anything, but just one mine for cobalt. And uh, oh, just lo and behold, China has flooded the market with cobalt because, you know, there's not really a cobalt market. It's so small, um, but it's critical. 
And so the prices dropped dramatically and Gervois says, well, you know, because our shareholders don't want us to open up right now, we're going to have to like delay this uh, decision making. Once again, it's a manipulation of that. And then the last example I'd use is like rare earth magnets. So we talk about rare earth and magnets. So rare earth, making a magnet creates a radioactive material. Well, in China, next to the rare earth processing facility, <laughs> there's a freaking massive radioactive pond. You can't do that in our country. You can't do that in South Korea. So we have a hear no evil, see no evil strategy. There's like a 100% cancer rate in that city. If you want to stay to the same standards and we're going to have radical transparency and we know what's going on throughout, I'm like, let's have at it. It's not about them. It's not about it. It's just mm -hmm. about like, we need a race to the top, not a race to the bottom because the people who will race fastest to the bottom will win and then the rest of us will be um, not, uh, not holding it. Uh, very quickly on your political question, um, look, uh, it was a very smart the way they did this because it was tax law. It was very hard to change taxes in the United States. Once you have something, it lasts for decades. Uh, when Donald Trump was president, he created a $1.8 trillion tax law. When the Democrats had control, they one, didn't have enough votes, but two is they didn't want to take away things from the American public. So although they ran against the Trump tax cut just for the rich, they in the end didn't do anything about it. And so these laws will stay, meaning all those tax cuts are still there and they will stay for a long time. And there's nothing an administration can't stop a tax cut. They can redefine it a little bit. They can change, you know, but that's whatever. Now, there are grants also to support this. That's a little bit different. They can decide like, OK, I want to slow walk it. I don't want to ever give the money. You know, there's like hundreds of billions of dollars sitting in the American government of projects that have been funded, but never actually the money's never left uh, the government uh, Government. So, you know, if they come in and they're like, we don't like electric vehicles, so we're not going to go fund this or that. But there's two things to, to say to that. Uh, number one, they can give the money to other things, meaning like they might not focus so much on battery component parts, but focus on the mining or like some of the things that are more like what Republicans, you know, you don't want. Mm. Um, so the money is there. And like where in there do they use their non to is. Many of these states are, there are red states that are getting the money. So there are going to be governors in the Republican Party who say, like, secretary of whoever, like, we want our state to get hundreds of millions of dollars. So please give the money. And they're going to have those governors going there and asking for it. So, again, it won't be framed as environmental. It won't be climate change. It won't be for EVs. It'll be for some larger, you know, narrative. Um, but, you know, so, again, um, I think it will change but it won't be like an exact opposite uh, thing. The, the language will be opposite. Mm -hmm. You'll think that it doesn't exist. Look, there have been Republicans, members of Congress who have shown up at ribbon cuttings of IRA money right. in their district right. who have like talked against the bill that's yeah. giving the money. Yeah. It's politics. Yeah. So the politics will sound one way. Uh, you know, there'll be sound and fury, but nothing will uh, change.